Hi, welcome to Quality of Life, Grace Teaching New Covenant Ministry. Um, we are here to build up the body of Christ, and we are new creatures in Christ, uh, new covenant believers, and uh, we uh, would just like to welcome you here. Um, today's topic is going to be on righteousness, and uh, we know that this is the breastplate um, for the body of Christ, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that um, and what that really is. Um, first of all, I'm going to go to Romans 3.10, and it says this. Um, Paul, the Apostle Paul is writing, he says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Um, righteousness in the scripture is just right standing with God. And so what he's saying here is nobody is in right standing with God. Um, no, not one. Um, so this is um, not going to be based on behavior under this new covenant. So how do we get righteousness? How do we get right with God? If no one is righteous, no one is right with God, how do we get right with God? So that's really what we want to know. Um, under the old covenant, um, in order to get right with God, See, the law always demanded obedience, and it demanded righteousness living in order to be pleasing uh, to God and to be in right standing with God. And so it was based on the efforts of man and what we did. But under this new covenant, righteousness is uh, going to be a little different. It's going to be um, um, John 1.17. Um, <clears throat> the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And so, of course, um, righteousness under grace um, was imparted to man. Um, and so that righteousness was, was imparted under grace to uh, the believer. But again, under law, law demands righteousness from man. Okay. And so, <clears throat> we're going to talk a bit about that. How many, um, first of all... Um, how do we get righteousness? First of all, we have to go to uh, Jeremiah 23, 6, which says, The Lord, our righteousness. And so there you go. I mean, there's only one righteous one, and that was the Lord, according to the prophet Jeremiah. Um, so Christ is righteousness. Um, in Romans 3, 22, um, it says, God makes people right. Through faith in Jesus Christ. He does this for all who believe in Christ. And so, under this new covenant, it's going to be very simple. Um, we're made right with God through faith in Jesus Christ alone. And so, when we approach our Heavenly Father, we have to have this view, because this is our catalyst for change, is when our God and Father sees us in Christ today, he sees us as perfect children, his children. And so it was through faith in Christ did we get that right to be called his children. And so that's our identity to him. We are perfect to him. We are always cleansed and righteous in Christ, in God's sight. We are always clean and in right standing with God um, through faith in Christ alone. And so, when we approach our Heavenly Father, this gives us peace with Him, knowing this. And this is our identity. Now, um, we have to uh, understand that uh, this is not based on our physical performance or behavior, but our identity in Christ, our spiritual birth in Christ. And so, just as He is, so also are we in this world. So, we have to start looking at ourselves as God sees us in Christ. And this, I believe, is the catalyst for change. And so as the Holy Spirit is in us, renewing our minds to this truth, um, we will be transformed. And uh, as we walk as children of God, the Holy Spirit, we're going to live from, we're going to want to live from that life-giving Spirit of Christ within us to lead us and to guide us. And so we're not going to need the, the rules and regulations, the Ten Commandments. We're going to learn to live from the life-giving Spirit of Christ, to lead and guide us to do what's right as children of God. And what we're going to discover is it's the grace of God 
as Titus 2.11.12 says, that has appeared, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and to live upright godly lives in these last days. And so be encouraged. God loves you, and so do we, and we just thank you for this opportunity. Um, remember, you're the most important person here because without you, we could not teach. And remember, we're learning so we can teach, and we're teaching so we can learn. Thank you, and God bless.